I'm here with Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Alexander, now that Brexit has happened and the UK has left, Macron has spotted uh, something that we didn't catch, actually, which is kind of interesting. France is the only nuclear power now in the European Union, and Macron is uh, capitalizing on that. So get into uh, Emperor Macron's latest attempt to rule over Europe with uh, France's nuclear arsenal behind him. Indeed, sir. I mean, he's made an extraordinary speech just recently in which he's basically talking about the need for arms control and the dangers for Europe of arms control. But he's also saying, you know, that France has this great nuclear uh, uh, deterrent, it's, its nuclear forces, and therefore it's France essentially that should be providing the protection to the Europeans the nuclear protection that they are obviously all the other European states are yearning for. They're obviously yearning for Emperor Macron and his missiles to protect them from, well, whom exactly? From the Russians? Well, Macron supposedly wants to have good relations with the Russians. From Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump leads the country with which most European states are allied with through NATO. From China? Well, China is far away and it's the great economic powerhouse with which Europe wants to trade. So it's not quite clear to me who are these people that Macron wants to protect Europe from, but it's very clear that he does want to protect Europe from someone. And if I may say, I mean, again, uh, putting irony to one side, here we see again Macron uh, totally uh, uh, lost in his own illusions. Uh, this idea that France possessing nuclear weapons gives him and the French any leverage is it is ridiculous, but it's the kind of uh, uh, it's the kind of thinking that he has. <laughs> is this all tied to this uh, EU army initiative that? Yeah, absolutely. He's very much in favor for actually. Absolutely, he wants an EU army. He wants France leading it because France is the great military power in Europe. It's also got the nuclear weapons. So essentially what this is, if you really drill down and try and understand what Macron is saying, what he's basically saying is he wants to be position France and ultimately himself as the leader of, European, of Europe's foreign and defense policies. He wants a, a European bloc somehow distinct from NATO, which he recently called brain dead, by the way. And at the same time, he wants to be the person who's going to lead it. And he thinks that having, you know, what is by European standards actually quite a good army and it's an efficient army. The French military is quite well run and nuclear weapons is going to make him somehow uh, uh, the natural leader of all the, uh, you know, of, of this, uh, of, of this force. It, it's completely delusional. And it shows how completely Macron does not understand the real sentiments across Europe. But it also again shows how completely out of touch he is with feelings, the feelings of his own people. I think it also shows how happy Macron is that Brexit has happened. Yes. yes. I mean, he's expressing in a way, he's expressing his joy that he's finally got the UK out Yes. And now France is the number one military power in Europe, and he is going yes. to use that to his advantage. Absolutely. And it is something uh, that Germany does not have over, over him. No. Merkel does not have this over him. No, that's entirely true. And may I, may I add, and just to remind our viewers, um, and, you know, if, if we don't remind our viewers, no one else will, that we were pointing out way back a year ago in the run up to the original Brexit day, which is the 29th of March 2019, that Macron was quite clearly wanting to get the British out of the EU because he saw the British as a obstacle to his plans, both for greater integration within the EU, in other words, for the establishment of the EU super state and for the leading role that he wanted to have to play in it. So, you know, he was always someone who wanted a, who wanted Brexit done. And that was why he did this extraordinary deal with Boris Johnson when they met at the General Assembly in New York in September, uh, which in the end did pave the way for Brexit. That's always been Macron's agenda. He's always wanted it. He's wanted the British out. 
he's wanted to get the Germans to play along with him. And he thinks that, you know, the fact that France has an army, you know, a strong army and nuclear weapons, that that's going to give him huge leverage over the Germans. The Germans will not be impressed by this at all. Who's he, who's he doing this for, Alexander? I mean, we have protest after protest in, yeah. in France, yeah. from the yellow vest to the transport strike. And now I read that there's now, a, I believe it's a teacher yeah. strike. Yes. Yes. That's going on right now. Teachers protest Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. It seems like he's just letting his country fall apart while he's speaking yeah. to some Brussels elite, yes. elitist core group of, of people. I'm trying to understand who are these speeches for? Well, well indeed. Why is he doing uh, this? I recently met at a social event a person who uh, uh, has just been to Paris. Um, and I was, I was, I, I learned from this person that Paris is in a state of total um, lockdown. I mean, in the sense that it, 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 it's looking more slummy than it has ever done, and there's armed police everywhere now. Uh, and you know, the situation is incredibly tense in ways that it has never been before. But uh, Macron, it seems to me, is you know insulated from all this within the Elysee Palace. I don't think he really understands the extent to which it's going on. And at the same time, you know, it's not unusual for some political leaders as they sense that, you know, the political situation beneath them is disintegrating to try to escape from having to deal with those problems by embracing these fantasies of, uh, you know, great, you know, military power, France, the great superpower and all that, in a way the two are not, in, um, you know, disconnected. I mean, you know, famously, Hitler was spending his time, you know, as the shells were falling in the bunker, he was planning all the great cities he was going to build. There is something of this element about Macron, I think, that, you know, he's also losing touch with reality uh, and, and escaping into his own fantasies. It's really incredible to to see this happening, and you know you have to ask yourself: He's not going to be winning any friends in no. NATO or the U.S. either. No, no. I mean, the Americans will be very angry with this because, of course, as far as they're concerned, the only country that provides the umbrella, the nuclear umbrella, is the United States. And can I just say, I mean, the United States, its nuclear arsenal dwarfs that of France. The idea that France can be a substitute for the United States in, in, military, in military terms is just nonsensical. I mean, when there was the attack on Libya in 2011, which the French were at the forefront of, it, it became very clear that beyond a certain point, the French couldn't operate. I mean, they needed you know, rockets and missiles and bombs to be provided by the U.S., because they would have run out of them without without U.S. logistical support. It was impossible. So, yes, France has an army and a good one. France has a navy and a good one. And France has a nuclear nuclear forces. But it is not remotely a superpower in the way that the United States is. And it is delusional for Macron to think in those terms. But the Americans are going to be very angry with this. I mean, they're not going to take it seriously. I don't think they take... Macron very seriously. Certainly, I don't think Trump takes Macron very seriously anymore, but they're not going to be pleased. And of course, the Germans are going to be absolutely furious because here again, they see Macron uh, stepping into their own, onto their own turf. As far as the Germans are concerned, it is they who are the key country in the EU because they've got the big economic power. And the Germans have this well-established relationship with the US and they don't want Macron coming along and meddling with it. So and the Germans are going to be angry. The uh, Americans are going to be angry. The British don't count anymore, but they're not going to be pleased because, you know, they don't want uh, uh, France leading Europe in this way either because that reduces whatever residual role Britain still has in shaping European foreign policy. And of course, all the major, all the other European powers are not going to be impressed at all because they don't believe it. They know perfectly well that what uh, 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 um, Macron was talking about is a load of tosh. So he's not impressing people in France because the people in France don't care about these fantastic 
things that he's talking about. What they care about is the fact that their country is, you know, not in a good way. And he's not interested in all of that. So the French people don't care about it. The Americans are angry about it. The, the Germans will be angry about it. The British won't be happy about it. And most Europeans, as I said, are going to be completely unimpressed about it. He's talking to himself. And the Russians, are they saying he's directing this nuclear, you know, talk at us? Well, I, presume, I presume they do. But I mean, you know, I think the Russians have uh, uh, got the, got the uh, um, sense of Macron pretty well. I mean, I, I'll never forget the first time that Macron met with Putin. And he was giving Putin these long lectures about Russian history and about how Russia was a European country. And it was so condescending and so patronizing, you know, Macron is lecturing Putin about the history of Putin's own country. And anyway, but I think the Russians have worked out now that, you know, Macron is just basically, a, well, I was going to say a fool. <laughs> I'm not sure he's exactly a fool. But anyway, a, a, an empty vessel. And at the same time, I think they realize that this sort of folie de grandeur that he has, it, they can actually exploit it in all sorts of ways. I mean, they can sort of make him think that he's more important than he really is uh, and use him to try to uh, gain leverage over the others by, you know, saying, you know, we've been talking to the French and um, Monsieur Macron thinks as we do on <laughs> Syria or on trade or on U Ukraine especially. Uh, 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 and I think I think they play him like a violin, if you might, if I have to say what I think. I wonder if like, you know, the political system inside of France and the opposition is just looking on and saying, you know, let him run around Europe and make these ridiculous speeches. Our time to to get into power is coming. Well, I think that's right. I mean, I think what I'm hearing is that Le Pen's, uh, uh, because she is the opposition in France, uh, that uh, Le Pen's um, uh, ratings are rising. And I wonder for how much longer even, you know, a, a, I mean, there's huge resistance in France to the idea of a Le, Le Pen presidency. But I mean, I, g given the choice between Le Pen and this utterly ridiculous situation that you have with Macron, I wonder whether the French people will just tolerate absurdity taken to these levels. One of the things I've learned in politics is that the one thing people don't forgive is the sense, is a feeling that a their leader is making their whole country appear ridiculous. I, 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 I've seen this so many times. And it's the thing that really annoys and upsets people almost more than anything. We got something of that with Greece and Cyprus, and you know, I can remember I can remember it in other in other situations also. So I, I think there could be a very strong reaction against Macron. Well, of course, there's a I mean, he's huge huge opposition to him already, but you know, I I think this could be beyond a certain point. Um, reach a, crit a critical point where, I mean, there's no coming back from it. Yeah. Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell. Smash that like button. Look for us on iTunes and SoundCloud as well to get an audio copy of this video. And please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. And pick up some magic mugs and some magic t-shirts. And if you're going to pick up a magic mug, Maybe buy one for Macron as well, because I think he needs all the IQ help <laughs> that a magic mug can give him. Absolutely. He needs he needs a proper mug to sort of bring him down to earth, one where, which he can read, uh, drink from and at the same time feel that, you know, his, his mental selves are finally getting some proper sustenance rather than these clouds of fancy that he seems to be governed by. And he couldn't drink from a better mug than this one because it's, these are magic mugs are absolutely beautiful. We, we made a choice when we started the Durand to go for quality, and you can see it in the quality of these mugs. I've had this one now for almost a year. It is as good as new, literally. It is beautiful. It is, it's uh, uh, light and strong and incredibly well balanced. It's got this beautiful luster, which shows you how fine the porcelain body is. And you see also the, there's no discoloration, no cracks, no chips, nothing. And by the way, the coat of arms is that of the Russian Federation. 
as you will find on Vladimir Putin's mugs. I'm sure that Vladimir Putin doesn't have mugs as good as ours, but certainly the mugs that he does have uh, um, carry this, uh, this badge. And he's definitely someone that Macron can learn from. Macron trying to teach him. In fact, it's Putin who ought to be the teacher and Macron the student, but that's another story. And of course, it's not just marvelous magic mugs that we have. We have amazing shirts like the one I'm wearing now, 100% cotton, long sleeved in this case, incredibly comfortable, extremely hard wearing. I've had this one now for almost a year and it's in perfect condition. It is literally as good as new. I would add, by the way, the irons beautifully, which is something else about our shirts because they're so well made. And um, you can also get other shirts. You can get T-shirts, similar quality T-shirts. You can get polo neck shirts, which are the absolute epitome of smart casual. And you can get V-neck shirts too. And you can also get uh, hats, hoodies and stickers and you can buy ebooks which we are now really uh, excited about because it's our way of actually enlarging and discussing the various topics that we do on our videos so you find all those great things in our shop you support us at the duran by buying these things from our shop you will be the owner of uh, uh, items of amazing quality so don't go back don't don't hold back support the duran be the proud owner of these great things go to our shop alex will tell you how go to the duranshop.com you'll find the link in the description box down below alexander mccurr editor in chief of the duran thank you very much until next time everybody take care